parental permission is now not required for kids choosing to change their pronouns or name in one Virginia school district. Fairfax County schools are mandating a training program for teachers there to enforce the policy. One training slide states that things like asking to use a private bathroom or a locker room that corresponds with the student's identified gender, not shared with the parents. And another slide details when and how a child can choose to change their name, parents not getting their say on any of it. Kennedy, we've seen this not just in Virginia, we've seen this in New Jersey. In fact, we'll pull up their state policy in New Jersey. A school district shall accept a student's asserted gender identity. Parental consent is not required. Mm. Um, parents are, are now secondary, it seems, to teachers and educators. And that's why parents are taking back this issue. And, and it is one of the very top political issues that they are voting on and they have been galvanized. And things like this, which may seem like a, a wonderful feel-good policy, it's actually a, a gift to the school cho choice movement. And I, I want to say thank you to Fairfax County because you are the ones who are getting non-political parents involved in this process for the very first time. They are running for school boards mm -hmm. and they are very very invested in their local races because they want to make sure that they have a say because they have been pushed out of education for long enough. And some parents, and I know this is going to sound crazy, some parents actually want their kids to learn math and reading and right. they want them to learn how to write and become critical thinkers. Right. Isn't that crazy? What a Brilliant concept. Idea. Yes. Dagan, we saw this in Virginia. It's like, did Fairfax County of all places not learn when McAuliffe was losing to a Republican, Glenn Youngkin, on the issue of education? Did they just not pay attention? Uh, no, it's a little liberal blue bubble marble in, uh, unto itself, being from Virginia. But I can read this a different way. That if a kid comes in and says, I want to be called this, the parent, the teacher can't say anything and because I did that when I was a kid my first name's Mary and they always call me Mary and I went to school one day and the kindergarten teacher went Mary Mary quite contrary how is your garden grow I was like don't ever call me that again <laughs> my middle name's Dagan <laughs> call me Dagan so some of it like again I encourage kids go in and say I want to be called Aloysius Snuffleupagus or Dale Earnhardt <laughs> Right. Yeah. So it's it, it's this in some way can um, help well prevent the teachers from intervening and encouraging because it's up to the kid, not the teacher. Dr. And the Pepper, parents should know anyway. The secrecy policies right. are problematic. You have a lawsuit in California, Buena Vista School, a parent who's saying for a year and a half she did not know that her daughter was going by a different pronoun. Then go down to Florida, Clay County. Just last week, a lawsuit was highlighted, brought to my attention by a parent who said, we didn't learn our daughter was being told to go by a different pronoun and coached in this fashion until we learned about two suicide attempts in the school bathroom. Now, the schools fight back against these parents, but the point is something is grievously wrong here when parents are learning about suicide attempts, according to their lawsuit, only after years of struggling with gender identification. Well, I think something's become abundantly clear over the last couple of years throughout COVID is that the uh, teachers unions and the educators in general are trying their best to separate children from their parents mm -hmm. the best they possibly can. They're trying to take away any power and decision making from the parents and putting that on the children or the teachers union and their lobby powerhouses. And the issue I have with this is teachers need, or, to, or parents need to be involved. I need to sign permission slips for my kids to go to a museum, but yet I don't need to sign a permission slip for them to change their name, their gender identity, or if they're even seeking help for mental health crises. That is a huge problem. Parents mm -hmm. need to be involved. And if there is a concern, there are social services and counselors that can and get involved, but you cannot exclude the parents. Mm -hmm. That is their go. legal right to their children, their children. And on top of that, by the way, I have a young little boy who wanted to be called P a Pikachu for the last like six months <laughs> last year. But just because he wants to be called Pikachu doesn't mean he is Pikachu <laughs> and doesn't mean at school that he can go there and say, I'm Pikachu. It's not right. They can't just go and say what they want. I understand what you're saying in terms of wanting to be called a different thing, but I can tell you at my kid's school, at the beginning of the school year, they say, legal name, what does your child like to be called? And that is a conversation between the parent and the child, mm -hmm. not, the, not the teacher and the child. And Cletus, I wanted to be called Cletus. <laughs> Here's what happened. Dagan was your real name. That's a that's a, well, look at look gross. at this, Raymond, real quick. Wall Street Journal editorial board. The wins are a coup for Mr. DeSantis. This is mm -hmm. wins in the school boards. He won 25 out of 30 school board seats. Who is turning parental control and educational choice into a GOP advantage? The elections are political vindication for his parental bill of rights bill that became law this spring and it was criticized widely in the national well, press. You remember the yeah, criticism? Absolutely. And as, as you all referenced earlier, 
there is a political hot potato here, but it runs in the Republicans' direction because yep. the, the Fairfax County School is worried about inequity. The inequity is that parents are being separated from the emotional and intimate lives of their children, and the school is trying to separate them. That's, not, that's a no-go. That is not going to work. You heard of cars for kids? This is cause for kids because they're pushing causes through these their little children. Teach them reading. Teach them writing. When, that, when reading level is deplorable as they are, it's not going to work. Artery, just do that. Pronouns can get sorted out at home and between the parent and the teacher, even if they want to be called Pikachu. You made the right decision. Hey, I wanted to be a cow growing up. So. Hey, I wanted to be Count Dracula. They wouldn't call me that. So, sorry. Oh, all right. Hey, everyone. I'm Emily Campagno. Catch me and my co-hosts, Harris Faulkner and Kaylee McEnany, on Outnumbered every weekday at 12 p.m. Eastern. Or set your DVR. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page for daily highlights.